Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe the sliding filament mechanism of skeletal muscle contraction. Now, if you're following the OCR spec, then you need to describe the roles of tropomyosin and troponin. AQA students only need to describe the role of tropomyosin. You should then be able to describe the energy supply during muscle contraction. Over the last few videos, we've been looking at the structure of skeletal muscle. Remember that skeletal muscle fibres contain the proteins actin and myosin. Myosin forms thick filaments and actin forms thin filaments. And I'm showing you how these filaments are arranged here. When a skeletal muscle contracts, the filaments are pulled together like this. In the last video, we looked at how muscle contraction is triggered via the neuromuscular junction. And if you haven't watched that video, then you need to watch it now. When an action potential arrives at the motor neuron, acetylcholine is released from the presynaptic knob. The acetylcholine triggers the sarcolemma of the muscle fibre to depolarise, and this depolarisation triggers calcium ions to be released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The increased concentration of calcium ions now triggers the actin and myosin filaments to slide together. So in this video, we're looking at what happens in the filaments during muscle contraction and how this is triggered by an increase in the concentration of calcium ions. Scientists call this the sliding filament mechanism. Now, in order to understand this, we need to take a closer look at the structures of myosin and actin. I'm showing you here the structure of a myosin filament. Myosin molecules consist of two parts. Firstly, myosin has a long fibrous tail structure. These myosin tails are clustered together, forming the filament. Secondly, each myosin molecule has a globular head group. Now, the myosin head groups point outwards, and each myosin head group has a binding site for actin and a binding site for ATP. OK, here's a structure of an actin filament. Actin forms two strands wrapped together into a helical structure. Running along the actin filament, we have binding sites for myosin. These are called actin-myosin binding sites. However, in an uncontracted muscle, these actin-myosin binding sites are blocked by a thread-like protein called tropomyosin. And I'm showing tropomyosin is a green strand. Now, tropomyosin is held in position by another protein, which is called troponin. And I'm showing troponin in blue. OK, so let's see how myosin filaments and actin filaments interact during muscle contraction. And I should point out that you need to learn all of these stages. OK, I'm showing you here a simplified diagram of a myosin filament and an actin filament. The myosin head groups are shown in grey. And notice that the myosin head is bound to a molecule of ADP. The actin-myosin binding sites are shown in red. We can see that the actin-myosin binding sites are blocked by tropomyosin. OK, so as we saw before, muscle contraction is triggered when calcium ions are released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The calcium ions now bind to the troponin molecules. This causes the troponin molecules to change shape, moving the tropomyosin away from the actin-myosin binding sites. So now the actin-myosin binding sites are exposed. The myosin head groups can now bind to the actin-myosin binding sites like this. We formed an actin-myosin crossbridge. Now, I'm only showing one actin-myosin crossbridge, but remember that this will be happening with hundreds of myosin head groups at the same time. OK, now the myosin head flexes. In other words, it changes its angle, and this pulls the actin filament along like this. At the same time, the ADP molecule is released from the myosin head. Now, a molecule of ATP attaches to the myosin head. This causes the myosin head to detach from the actin-myosin binding site. Now, the myosin head acts as an ATPase, hydrolyzing the ATP molecule to ADP and phosphate. And this ATPase activity is activated by the high concentration of calcium ions in the sarcoplasm. The energy from ATP hydrolysis is used to return the myosin head to its original angle. Now this process continues for as long as there's a high concentration of calcium ions in the sarcoplasm. 
And as we said, a large number of actin myosin cross bridges form and break in rapid succession. And this pulls the actin filament along. I'm showing you again the diagram of the muscle fibers. Now, the myosin heads point in opposite directions on either side of the myosin filament. This means that the actin filaments are pulled closer on either side of the sarcomere. And I'm showing that here. So, during muscle contraction, the sarcomeres shorten. Now, when muscles relax, calcium ions are transported from the sarcoplasm into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. This is active transport using energy from ATP hydrolysis. Now, troponin and tropomyosin return to their previous positions. The actin myosin binding sites on the actin filaments are now blocked by the tropomyosin. So the muscle fibers return to their relaxed positions. Okay, so as we've seen, ATP is essential for muscle contraction. Now the ATP is provided by mitochondria carrying out aerobic respiration. And generally, this will be used for low intensity exercise over a long period. However, during intense muscle contraction, the blood supply may not be able to deliver adequate oxygen to muscles. So in this case, the muscle cells can carry out anaerobic respiration. And we looked at anaerobic respiration in the respiration topic. During anaerobic respiration, ATP is generated by glycolysis. The pyruvate produced by glycolysis is converted to lactic acid. And this buildup of lactic acid can cause the muscle to become fatigued. So anaerobic respiration is generally useful for short bursts of very high intensity exercise. Now muscle cells also have another way of generating ATP. This involves the chemical creatine phosphate, which is stored in muscles. And creatine phosphate is also called phosphocreatine. Creatine phosphate can phosphorylate ADP to form ATP. And I'm showing you that here. So during very intense exercise, ATP can be generated from ADP in this way. However, the stores of creatine phosphate are limited. Once the muscle has stopped contracting, ATP is used to regenerate the creatine phosphate store. Okay, so hopefully now you can describe this sliding filament mechanism of muscle contraction.